I will say I heard Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan was trending last night and this morning um, as a result of people being dismayed at things he had said on his podcast, of course. And as is so frequently the case, when you go and check, a Joe is not did not say the things that he is reported to have said and be the things that people imagine were so upsetting shouldn't have been upsetting to them. One of the things that Joe said was something very much like uh, what you and I have been planning to say here about um, these other interventions and the fact that it's weird that we're not recommending them. Um, but <clears throat> the thing Joe got in trouble for most um, precipitously mm -hmm. was he was claimed to, he it was argued that he said on this podcast that um, the vaccines might be causing mutations in the virus, right? Which is an odd thing for him to have said. And when you go and look at what he actually said, he never said anything of the sort. In fact, what he did was he read a he read from a paper that argued that the vaccines might select for mutants that would be more dangerous or more transmissible, which is a totally defensible uh, and highly logical thing for him to have said. So in any case, there's some weird phenomenon where uh, the simple fact of, you know, Joe Rogan speaking common sense is so dangerous that he needs to be straw manned online and he needs to trend for, you know, supposed villainy. Um, when in fact, what he's saying are things that should be obvious to anyone. You know, there clearly is a hazard that comes from the selective environment that we are creating for this virus. There clearly is a lost opportunity in not recommending to people that, hey, there are certain things that are under your control that you're maybe not doing and you don't realize may be playing a very large role in whether or not you're vulnerable to COVID come January. Right. So there's some <clears throat> there's some failure of our discussion that's so fundamental um, that we're just we're missing opportunities that are obviously there and should be completely uncontroversial. Right. Indeed. Does the disaster of Merrick's disease in chickens due to leaky vaccines relate to COVID vaccines in any way? Would this have been prevented if they didn't vaccinate the chickens? Yes. We don't know whether it relates to our COVID situation. It's too early to tell. Right. I mean, we talked about it. Um, you know, we, we talked about the paper that did that research. Um, it's from like 2015, I think, um, it, both on the podcast and in the paper, in our paper. Um, with regard to providing some empirical evidence that this, this, is understood to be an outcome at least sometimes when you mass vaccinate with a leaky vaccine um, when a disease is in this case i think endemic rather than pandemic but the distinction may be um, not important here um, would this have been prevented if they didn't vaccinate the chickens I and mean, i think you know the difference between merrick's disease and covid is that as terrible as covid is the um you know, the fatality rate, the case fatality rate is not nearly as high. Like Merrick's disease just like wipes through populations, as I understand it, I think. Well, with a caveat. Okay. Uh, the caveat being these were domestic chickens. Yeah. Um, and domestic chickens are a, a unique critter. Among other things, they have had their telomeres elongated um, by I mean, of course they must have but do you know that yeah i do you do okay um but it's it's like several just, just by the same breeding protocol is elongated the telomeres of the lab mice right presumably it's the same okay, economic so that thing pressure. we don't know for sure that, but, yeah okay. that we don't know mm -hmm. um but so merrick's disease is a neoplastic virus a rare virus that causes cancers mm. um these creatures are likely to be cancer prone. I didn't of, know. I didn't know it was neoplastic. Right. Okay. So anyway, the point is, uh, with the caveat, the chickens are not a good model for anything by virtue of their distortion yeah. through their breeding process. Who knows? Yeah. But the idea that we are dealing with an issue of um, uh, driving escape mutants with leaky vaccines, possible ADE, mm -hmm. you know, these things are on the table. And what Merrick's disease has to tell us is uh, proceed with caution because welcome to complex systems. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I mean, just let's be clear. So, you you know, in the first hour, first hour and a half, you were talking about the way that Joe Rogan has been um, straw manned and said to say things that he didn't say. And I think the quote that you read or suggested that um, he said that vaccinations um, create mutants, right? Cause mutation. Cause mutation, which he did not say. Which I I see that cause mutation 
could be equal, you know, equalized to create mutants. And the selective pressure, which you just said correctly, but could be misunderstood by those who weren't paying careful attention or who wanted to misconstrue. Who don't get the difference. Or it's just like who don't, you know, and it's, it's a little subtle, right? That there will, you know, all the, these viruses are, are replicating and they've all got variation in them, right. right? And so the mutations are happening regardless. And if you've got a, vac- if you've got a selective pressure in the form of a vaccine that's now coming in and going, Woof! on some number of them, you know, those, those things that already exist, those mutants, those mutations that already exist in the population that for whatever reason aren't, um, you know, aren't coverable by the vaccine um, will be more likely to thrive. It's not that the vaccine created them, they already existed, right. but they will grow in abundance relative to the other strains if they are not susceptible to the selective pressure, which is the vaccine. Right. But from the point of view of what Joe Rogan said, he said, and he was just reading a paper, but the point was the vaccines select for these things. That's neither here nor there. Like, I, I just thought that this was an important obviously Joe Rogan didn't say the thing that they said, and you didn't say the thing that people will misread as you just having said. I think it's important for us to, as many times as possible, be very clear about what is actually meant. Because, you know, there's now papers out that seem to say this with regard to COVID, in which some of the authors of those papers even are like, oh, no, no, you know, definitely there won't be any selective pressure. And you you hear them talk and you think, I, you don't you don't actually understand how evolution works. Yeah. And um, we, I, I just this this wasn't about Joe Rogan. It was just like reminding us. I know, that- but I'm I'm involved in that exact discussion at this moment, and it, it is important to be clear. It's the selection that is right. the consequence of the vaccine. So why don't you again? So I've just said it clearly. Why don't you again say it clearly? Just so we <clears throat> have it as many times as possible. The hypothesis is that the vaccines create immunity that then selects for some variants, right? So mutation makes changes. It and is selects presu- for presumably, is not creates. Right. Presumably, uh, mutation is random. It doesn't have to be, but that's the presumption of uh, almost every model. And selection exerted by the immune system on a leaky uh, vaccine, uh, a on a uh, breakthrough case that results from a leaky vaccine will be for those variants that are most invisible to the immune system, which will then likely be invisible to the next vaccinated person's immune system too, because it's the same immunity that is induced. Right. 